In this video, I'm going to be going over five PMP practice questions with you for the 2021 PMP exam. I'm also going to show you what a drag and drop question will look like on this current exam. My name is Andrew Ramdial, and I am the author of the book PMP Exam Prep Simplified. Let's go ahead and knock out these five questions as quickly as we could. I'm also going to be giving you guys some tips and some things to think about when answering your PMP question so you can ace your exam. Let's knock them out. Okay, question number one. Project team members are worried that a new resource does not seem suitable for an allocated task. How should the project manager respond to this concern? So before we get into the actual questions, uh, for, uh, the actual choices, let's go ahead and see what's going on here in this particular question. So first of all, the team members are worried that there's some, that there a new resource doesn't seem suitable for a task. And that's their main concern. So short question. A. Contact senior management to discuss the prospect of reassigning the new resource to a different project. B. Schedule time to talk with the new resource to assess their skills and understand their strength level. C. Ask the team members to document task-related deficiencies displayed by the resource. D. Contact the project sponsor to highlight these alarm and decide on a proper response. And the answer is, you can pause the video now if you like and come up with your answer. If not, the answer is going to be B. Now let's go through why these choices, why the rest of them are wrong and why this one is correct. So A, contact the C, contact senior management to discuss the problem, reassign them. There's two things wrong here. Number one, if you remember from your, from your PMP study in, you should never take actions unless you have assessed the situation. Find the root cause of problems before actually taking any action. That is a mindset of your exam. Always remember for your exam, in any problem, any concerning uh, things any team member or any uh, stakeholder may have, you should first assess the problem. Find the root cause of your problem. And this one here, you're already reassigning the person, so this is wrong. Not to mention contact uh, contact senior management. I can't really even imagine a time when you'd want to contact senior management right off the bat. Senior management is always going to be your last resort, and it's probably a choice you should never select. So anytime you're doing your exam and you see that choice of senior management is in there, like contact them or ask them for help, that's probably not the answer. So throw that one out. C says, ask the team members to document task-related deficiencies displayed by... So you're approaching the team members and you're taking actions against that resource without even finding out information about that particular resource. The best thing here is going to be to find a root cause. Go and talk to the resources, which is B, which says the project manager should not take actions by just listening to other team members' feedback. D, contact the project sponsor to highlight these alarm and decide on a proper response. So you're contacting the, the project sponsor to help you with something and then decide on a proper response, not a good answer. That's like going back to the senior management one. Always go after your problem head on on this question. Any choice that says we're going to hit that problem myself, I'm going to do my research, that's probably going to be the answer. Question number two. A week previous to the project kickoff call, a project manager meets with a key project resource to gain a deeper understanding of how difficult the project deliverables are. The resource expresses concern and worry regarding the deliverables. What would the project manager do to ensure that the deliverables are realistic? So before we get in here once again, so so it seems before the project kickoff was done, the project manager meets with a resource to gain a deeper understanding of how difficult this thing is. Then the resource has some kind of concern regarding this. So the question here is to ensure that the deliverables are realistic. So what really can we do to ensure deliverables are realistic and address the concern? A, complete a feasibility study and then assess the results. Discuss the resources, the resources worries with the sponsor and modify the project charter. C, note the concerns in the issue log and review at a later date. And D, identify threats and preventive actions by conducting a risk assessment. Okay, so let's go through the choices here. By the way, you can pause the video right now. And the answer is, before we go through the choices, is going to be A, conduct a feasibility study and then assess the results. Why is that? Well, because there is some kind, why is, is the deliverable realistic? And why would you ask if the deliverable is realistic? It's maybe because, is it feasible to get it done? Maybe the deliverable is very expensive and it's not feasible for the project to complete it with the budget or the schedule that it has. 
the best thing here is to do that feasibility study and then assess these results and then see maybe something is right or wrong. This is you doing it. You're hitting this problem head on and you're solving it. Now, this you're probably saying, Andrew, that really is not the best option there. But you know what? It's better than all the other choices. Let's go through them and see why. Discuss the resources, worries with the sponsor and modify. So you're going to take actions right away without understanding what the concern is here. You're modifying the charter. Note the concerns in the issue log. Never, ever kick the can down the road. Any choice that says kick the can down the road, re review it at a later date or push it off is never an option. Remember that on your exam. Eliminate that choice right away. Identify threats and preventive actions by conducting a risk assessment. Although this seems good, it's not really a risk. It's is the deliverable realistic. So the best thing here is to do that feasibility study and to see, hey, is it actually realistic? So to ensure to deliver a realistic, the project manager needs to conduct a feasibility study. So sometimes in a question, just one word, this word realistic is what's steering you to the right answer. Of course, when you take in your exam to read very carefully. Practice question three. Although the sponsor and the team acknowledged that the new project has an acceptable budget and accurate schedule, the project manager worries that unplanned events could threaten the project's success. So they know, so the team and the sponsor both know that this, the project has an acceptable budget and schedule. But you, the project manager, seems worried about some kind of unplanned event that could threaten the project's success. What should you do first? Now, this is a common thing you're going to see on your exam. What should we be doing first? Engage in the identification of project risks and then assess those risks. B, ask the project sponsor for additional funding to cover the project, to cover project planning. C, plan a meeting with the functional manager to address the potential impact of unplanned risks. Execute the project as scheduled, knowing the additional project funds must be requested at a later point in the project. And the answer is, pause the video once again. If not, let's get the answer is A. Now, first of all, I highlighted this word threaten here to give you guys a little tip. A threat to a project is a risk, a negative risk. Remember in your study, positive risks are opportunities, negative risks are threats. So in this one, they're telling you an unplanned event is basically a risk. So they're telling you indirectly that, you know what, this is some kind of a risk. And what you, what is the first thing you're going to do when it comes to a risk? It is to identify that those risks and then assess them. Asking a sponsor for additional funding is taking action without even knowing what these particular risks are. Meet, uh, plan a meeting with the function to, to discuss the potential impact of unplanned risk. Although this one may sound good, you're scheduling a meeting with the functional manager. Once again, don't go up the ladder right away. These are things that you should be doing. You don't go and tell your functional manager to help you with unplanned risk. Execute the project, a schedule, and then this point here where it says at a later point, kicking the can down the road, you know that's not a choice already. That I should, D by the way, should have been the choice. You should have eliminated right off the bat. It says in the explanation, a project manager needs to be proactive, familiarize herself with the identified risk and their responses. Question number four. Several, su several successor activities are behind schedule because a project team member has not been at work for the past, for the past week. This affects a critical path. How should the project manager respond to this issue? So again, we have an issue. Several, so let's analyze the question. Several activities here seems to be behind schedule. Because a team member really has not been at work, how should you address this issue? A, obtain a new resource to complete the task resulting in lower impact on the, on the critical path. B, discuss the issue with the team member and work with him to identify a practical solution. C, remind the team member that they need to complete the work package in the agreed upon time frame. D, ask the functional manager for help communicating, uh, for help communicating with the absent team member. Okay, the answer here is, once again, you guys can pause it. If not, the answer here is B, discuss the issue with the team member and work with them in a practical solution. This you should have gotten because at this point, you're seeing right now that on these PMP questions, we got to be direct. We got to hit those problems head on. We got to find the root cause. Which one here would have found the root cause? Obtaining a new resource has never found the root cause of why this guy is absent. But if we discuss the issue with him, then you know what? Now we are going to find the issue or the problem. By the way, servant leadership. On your exam, you need to study servant leadership. Make sure you know that for this exam. Servant leadership encourages listening and serving and thus it may be probable to compromise a team member. 
Being a servant leader means to talk to people, to fetch food and water, quote unquote, to give them the resources they need, remove obstacles in their way. And if you find obstacles or problems, you got to help them. Remember, you're a servant leader, you got to help them to fix their issues. B is the only choice that does that. C is like being a really hard person. Remind, that's going to the team member and says, hey, you got to get this done. That is not being a good project manager. That's being a tyrant or a dictator. Ask the functional manager once again. Never really go with choices that has senior management or functional managers. Very rarely are those ever going to be a choice. Before you select one of those choices, really think hard before you do it. Uh, for communicating with the absentee team member. You're not going to, this is your problem. This is your project. You have to deal with it. Okay. So these are the just four questions I wanted to, to, to do here with you guys. I'm going to end this off here and, uh, we are going to go to a drag and drop question that I have here in OneNote. I'm not a Photoshop expert to make beautiful drag and drop questions, but I did this here in OneNote quickly so you can just see what it looks like. On this exam, they're going to they're going to give you things to put in order. They're going to give you things to drag it to solve issues or problems. I have a pretty simple one here just to give you an idea of what these drag and drops will look like. So here we go. You remember Tuckman's ladder if you studied HR in your PMBOK and also Tuckman's ladder is used heavily in agile project management also. I'm not going to go into the specifics of Tuckman's ladder. Read that in your PMP study guide. But let's see if you can put this in order. Okay, what you should do right now is pause the video right now and then unpause it so we can put this in order. Let's pause the video right now. Okay, good that you have put this in order. At least I hope so. All right, so let's see if you got this. Um, Tuckman's ladder is foreman. That is going to be number one. So let's put that there. Notice how I'm just dragging it in, into the box. And this is what you're going to be doing on your exam. Foreman. So when you bring the team members together, the team members combine together, the next thing they're going to do is they're going to start fighting with each other. They're going to have disagreements with each other. So then they storm, right? Now they're going to say, they're going to have disagreements. They're going to say, well, I don't like doing it this way. We shouldn't use this method. And one doesn't like that and so on. Eventually, they got to come together and they actually have to start this work. So they're going to norm. So norming means the team is coming together in order to actually do the work now. They're coming to agreements, I should say. Then they have to go out and get the job done. So now they go out and they actually start working on the job itself. And finally, they're going to adjourn. The team is over or the job of that self is over. So on your exam, you should expect questions like this where you have to just drag things and put them in order. Now, these are just five practice questions. Guys, if you like my video, give me a like, give me a subscription. One of the things that I might be doing soon is maybe doing a live, uh, a live stream with you guys to see and then doing 10 to 15 questions in every live stream every week to get you guys well prepared for your exam. If that's something that you would like for me to do, you know what, leave a comment and leave a comment below and let me know that, hey, you would like to join a live stream. Maybe if I have the time, I'll get it done. Let me see how much people like it. But once again, if you guys like this video, you like these practice questions, I can do a whole lot more with you. Give me a subscription, give me a like, and I'll see you in the next video.